Hey there, once again, I'm Mario the Artisan Rogue, and inadvertently, I seem to have started to dive into more and more about learning about these AI apps that are happening. Now, this is one that I'm showing you here on screen, as you can see it. It's running in my browser. It's called AI Comic Factory. It's stored on huggingface.co spaces. The only reason I even found out about this was because of the fact that there was a YouTube video I had stumbled across that had, it had information about it. And then when I started reading the comments, which you know what they say, never read the comments. Yeah, it went from there. So all I'm going to do is run through this and sort of demonstrate just for the sake of posterity and in the event somebody someday wants to go, hey, this guy recorded this and this is what it used to be before they took over the world. Now, I'm going to be pretty clear on something. I don't think that AI has reached its full potential yet. And I don't mean that in a positive way. I mean that just because something has potential doesn't necessarily mean anything. I mean, cancer has the potential to kill you. This is something, and I'll explain more as I go through it, but understand for anyone that's watching this, I am very much a traditionalist and and majority of the sense when it comes to doing art and creation. I understand where things can be utilized to make workloads better, but I'm going to come back on that here in a second. So let's just jump into this right here. First of all, it offers you a couple of different layouts, everything like layer layout zero through three. They're all slightly different and you can actually choose different things. So I'm going to show you something here that shocked me. The story, I use this a little bit, and from some of the stuff I was reading, it has limited prompts that you can utilize for it. And again, still learning a lot of this stuff. So if I enter in robot eating pizza, we're going to put uh, two things here in spaceship. Three things that I thoroughly enjoy. Four if you count eating. And so we're going to go ahead and hit go. Now it's going to take the time to quote unquote generate a new story. What it's doing is basically traversing all over wherever it can, finding different things to compile. See, story is ready, but server's a bit busy. Please hold tight. During certain times of the day, especially even last night, it seems like on the weekends at night, this thing is almost inaccessible. Here it goes. It's starting to render now. The biggest challenge I've found is that, and you'll see when this finishes rendering, I it's every I, I did this before and I'm willing, I wish I had shaved, I wish I had saved the screenshot of what this looked like prior. <laughs> it, it was really weird. And uh, depending on the layout you choose and everything, it's going to compile something completely different. Now, I have heard all sorts of different arguments about this, that we as artists, when we see something, when I go to a museum, when I worked at the museum, anything like that, that we're inundated by all of this input and all this sort of thing. And we process it and we do something from there. And I would say in agreement that, yes, that is the part that we absolutely do. What we do not do is take it and regurgitate it in a very odd way, unless that is the purpose of it. But this is pure randomness. Now you're seeing here live where this is doing this. It just finally popped in the last one. If you were to look at this, there's a few things that are kind of odd, but some things that, that do work. And the only reason is, and I'm just as much at fault for sitting here training on this thing by entering anything in this. None of the robots are the same. There are some similarities and they look like they could technically fit within the same universe, sort of, kind of. The, I mean, it turns into a whole thing of what is and isn't acceptable. If we go into this and we start looking, the first thing, the easiest thing is the hands. These are a nightmare. This is absolutely crazy. The venom-like teeth, that's kind of strange. You know, I noticed the vertebrae here. This slice of pizza, just because I worked at pizzerias for a long time, who cut this? What? Why is this happening? Other things up here, you know, and I also noticed now it's starting to 
starting to, you know, figure out some sort of weird Greek text in there. It could pass for alien or robotic language. Even here, the forearm is kind of messed up. I mean, you could argue maybe he's a junk bot or something like that. I don't really know what's going on here. What is he tethered to? Or is that just wire coming in and out of the, the window, porthole, whatever it is? I'm not really sure what this thing is down here. Looks like a parasite or something. Doesn't really matter. The pizza, surprisingly, looks pretty accurate for the most part, especially down here. There are some things that it's starting to do better and better. The sides of the head and everything have, you know, sort of an Ultron-like look to them. Terminator-esque something. Get over here into this one. The pizza looks even better. There are some weird cuts, but maybe through logic that's what they suppose and how you'd cut a pizza. Of course, this is floating at a weird angle, and this is breaking the bottom plane. Not sure what's going on there. And uh, frozen red peppers. That's great ice. And then I'm not sure what's happening here with this either weird old banana or baby arms. I'm not sure what's going on here. The hands are weird. Again, a lot of this sort of thing going over and over again. Perspective is not bad in the background. And overall, by the time you get down to here, you can almost, and I'm, this is, oh my God, and I'm trying to be as positive as possible when I'm, do, when I'm saying this. If this was your starting point, you could extrapolate, here are four robots, right? This, this would not be out of place in like the animated show Love, Sex, and Robots. And I think that's what they call it. I, I've seen a couple of episodes from it. I do love the creation on there. None of it is AI. And I could see where maybe this first guy has more of a villainous turn. He's got sharp teeth and he's having a conversation. And then you switch to this guy over here. Maybe he's sort of the Murdoch of the team. He's not, you know, he's partially insane or extremely stupid. Or maybe he's, you know, the one that gets made fun of because he still has a human mouth and or whatever. Right. Just making stuff up as I go along. And this is their approximation of what a pizza party is from having learned that through old books that they found, journals or magazines or maybe sales supplementation or catalogs or something. Or maybe just pictures they found on a digital camera. Maybe videos of somebody getting their book at rewards at Pizza Hut. And so they want to give it a try. Jump down here to this one. And maybe this guy is you know, checking over stuff and he's all business, right? Like this particular guy just doesn't have the time to eat the pizza. He's sitting over here. He's thrown down packets of Parmesan on the ground out of anger. There's a bunch of mini pizzas over here. I don't know why. <laughs> There's a lot of things here where maybe this is the leader. Maybe he's a bit more straightforward and that sort of thing. But then you come over here to this orange bot and maybe this is the more caretaker bot. Maybe he's the first aid robot. Maybe he's the one that's the chef robot. Maybe this is how, you know, he's the one creating this stuff. Maybe he's experimenting with different things or seeing maybe their whole concept is this is four robots that are simply researching something, an era, a certain time in the past. Now, as a prompt, if you were to look at something like this and do nothing more with it, you could probably build a story off that. Maybe there are four robots that that is their entire thing. They don't understand exactly why they were there, but they understand their first prime directive, if you want to call it that. And that is find out what humans were like during this era of time. And they stumble across something like pizza parties or pizza restaurants or whatever. And they're wondering, was this a cultural thing? Why was it worldwide? Why was it something that everyone seemed to enjoy? Why were there so many variations? Anything like that. You could build a story around that. You could understand that maybe in their limited functionality that they that there's nothing more for it than that, right? If AI were only simply used for that, probably wouldn't have an issue with it. Because when I'm looking at a lot of this, I know this is pulling from the dynamic of already existing art from living artists such as myself. Now, thankfully, I've been told that the current art style I utilize is almost impossible and worthless for AI to be able to really use. I kind of wonder about that because it gets better and better all the time. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and use this exact same one. And we're going to jump from layout three to layout two. Okay. Now this is also going to start rendering using the exact same prompt that's up there on top. And I know that a lot of it is based on how much 
traffic is hitting this thing. What scares me in the original video that I found this on on YouTube, there are plenty of comments and there have been more added since then. So the ones I'm probably referencing are going to be buried somewhere. But there was a lot of talk about like this would be wonderful if I could implement my own original characters in there and then it would build the rest for me. Now, I recently went to a wonderful exhibit for Spider-Man. And it is populated with artwork from all sorts of artists. Modern and all the way back to the 60s when, what, 1962 when Spider-Man came out. Every nuance of it has errors and fixes and versions and sketching underneath it. And it's phenomenal. And it's beautiful. And it's imperfection. And it's ultimate, wondrous, and completely magical end result. From the covers to the inside pages. And I understand not every single comic artist out there is going to say that every single work they've ever done or page they've ever created is like mind-numbingly awesome or amazing. No, you can go through old you know, bins of dollar books and find plenty of books that you're like, what was this person on? Or did they even know how to draw? And that's not to knock anyone. Just you have a variance in skill sets, abilities, all that sort of stuff. But the particular artists in this exhibit showed amazing continuity, even when they applied their own feel. When you went from McFarlane to any one of the others that had drawn, and McFarlane sticks in my head because I he was that was when I really started reading spider-man was right around that time i had older issues but i really got into it because i love the larger more expressive eyes and that sort of thing it just really clicked with me but and i had originally liked spider-man because i was young and i grew up overseas and i watched the japanese version first then when i came over the next version i immediately saw was the one on the electric company so i had a very skewed weird take on what spider-man was nonetheless i appreciated all of them for what they were and every last bit of them were created in some way, shape, or form, directly by a person being inspired to draw them or recreate a costume in a certain way. What's happening here is we can already tell from the first panel that's rendered, this robot doesn't look anything like the other ones we just saw. At all. Not even close. It's a compilation of things put back together, and it's assembling what it believes to be a robot. I often fear... Because I've heard rumors that there are manga companies that are really in favor of this sort of technology to pump out more manga and stuff. And I know that there's plenty of people that... And I, I fit this bill to some degree, too. I don't really have a group of people that I can work with on anything. And that's fine. I, I'm not saying that to make anyone feel bad for me. I'm saying that, in general, I just don't. Some of it is really preference on my own part. Some of it is just that... Trying, especially today, to get things done with the way that a lot of things in life are working, it's different than it was even 15, 20 years ago. So it becomes a lot more challenging to pull people together to get one good effort out. People do it all the time, but it's just not in my wheelhouse and I've never really succeeded in anything like that. I might be the wild variable in that. And you can tell this is also taking a little while to load here. And here the pizza looks pretty good again. You know, pepperoni with different... I don't know what's going on with this weird tiny slice here. You know, the other part that really surprises me about this is I still struggle drawing. I have sketchbooks. <laughs> no one's going to see those things. When you see these sketchbooks that are on Instagram that are stunning, one of two things have happened. Somebody really planned them out and made them so that that way when they were putting these things together, this was perfect. This was beautiful. Something they could show off and use for marketing. Or there are the rarefied few individuals that that is the level that their sketchbooks are at. And they draw every single day for hours and then go and finish their day or start their day in their sketchbook and create incredible pieces like that. That's enviable, but that's not me. Sometimes it doesn't work out and that's what erasers are for. Sometimes it doesn't work out and that's what a whole nother idea that will come along means. I think that especially since Adobe has jumped in on this, but at the exact same time, you now have shows that are clamoring saying we will not accept AI art. All right, that's fine. But the onus is on them to find out whether or not there are AI artists there. And I hate to see the accusatory levels that some people may go to 
to call each other out in the event somebody believes that. I mean, quite frankly, there's already an issue where there are people that show up and set up in either Artist Alley or in other areas, and they're not the original artist. They've stolen the artwork, or they've hired people, and they, they're they just reselling. That's all they're doing. And this is also frustrating how long this is taking to load these last ones. It's really kind of nuts. Because this one's not even giving me any warning as to how long this is taking, or how long it's going to take, or anything. And I am wondering how close it's going to be in proximity to what we've already got established here. Because... Unless you're saying that from the last page we had generated to this one, that there is some narrative break where, you know, I've got yet another robot that seems to be using dryer pipe for a neck and legs and arms and stuff. Uh, there's no real connective tissue. The other people, the other robots were clearly, it, so it seemed from one panel, it looked like they were somewhere where there was sunlight or daylight or something. Now, it could be argued maybe they were in the bowels of the ship. Anything could be reimagined. We can reinterpret anything, which is one of the reasons why memories and ourselves are so, oh, they're so unreliable because we can remember things differently and stuff like that. Believe me, as somebody who deals with daily nostalgia sort of things, even in comments and stuff and with fanboy bullshit, <laughs> people remember a lot of things. In fact, while we're waiting for this to load, I'll give you a perfectly good example. There's a video that makes the rounds every once in a while that talks about the the missile firing, uh, the rocket firing Boba Fett. Now, I I am not a Boba Fett fan, but I am obsessed with weird oddities like that. And I know from different people that have worked from Kenner who have been interviewed and who have stated this multiple times over that there was only about 100 of them made. Of those, like 30 of them, I think, were the J-hook, and then the rest, the other 70-odd, were like the, the slide hook ones. Everything else had been glued into place. And I believe that hook that is still back there on the back of some of them, or you could see it. I don't own a Boba Fett right now that I can pull over here. I have somewhere in storage, and I have some of the newer ones. But we're talking specifically about the older original one that was with the mail-away offer that offered a fire, you know, a firing rocket. I'm not surprised by the amount of people in the comments that were like, hey, I had that. Oh, my God, I had that. Or I burned that thing over a campfire one time, you know, but I felt good doing it. A lot of weird comments because when they find out that those rocket firing Boba Fett's, the few that do exist, that are in existence, that have been accounted for, now sell for well over $10,000 per figure. There is a weird thing that happens in there on an emotional level where they are certain they had that exact same thing. Almost fear of missing out, almost... I can't, you know, like they don't want to admit that somebody might be in a better position or have had better luck than them. I don't know what it is. The human condition is a very strange thing. And nothing I really want to get into here except for the fact that that same human condition can often push us into a zone of sitting here. And I can imagine somebody who's really trying to make this work for them getting frustrated and going, why is this page not loading for me? I don't understand what's going on here. Now, there could absolutely have been something that went wrong here. So we're going to go ahead and... It's not even letting me do anything else right now. It's literally making me wait for this to load. So it makes me wonder if, like, because I can't choose another one. I have to load this. Um, I could type in here, but it's not having allowing me to go. So I wonder if I hit refresh. We went to layout two. Oh, now I got to try and remember my prompt. Robot eating pizza in spaceship i think that's what it was let's go ahead and hit go that's just the automatically served up comment it's very classic you know okay so here it goes starting to build again and you know considering that's the exact same prompt i'm kind of wondering what's going to be in the tall one we had seen just now that it was you know a white robot blue uh lens for the eyes and then a space scene behind them there's a part of me that has tried to be really open-minded about this. Is this the next natural evolution? Is this the equivalent to when like certain companies and some that I know firsthand that had employees that lost their goddamn minds whenever computers were introduced back in the days of, you know, Ruby Lith and, and cut and paste up stuff. Change is scary. Oh Lord. Oh my God. That is a horror show. Okay, so here's what's really crazy. Um, not okay. Now this is a little weird, right? 
No, I mean, it's a lot weird. Oh, my God. There is a lot to unpack here. <laughs> All right. Let me let me jump into this real quick, because the first thing that caught my eye, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but layout two is specifically one, two, a third long one, and then a fourth one down here on the bottom. Now, if we follow that trajectory of thought, it brought in its own two panels here. These are panel breaks, clearly panel breaks. I don't know why. It just decided to do that. And I'm not saying that's imagination. I'm not saying it's thinking. There's no real good reason for that to facilitate. There's no facilitation for this. None that I can think of. Now, if we're looking at it, the same sort of thing, the hands are still messed up, you know, pizza is pizza, whatever. You know, there's this whole side coil thing on the, you know, the, the, the side disc thing that's really popular. The human aspect being brought into it is just unnerving because I wonder if whenever you, you know, like if certain, if certain variables like eating, well, that's only going to showcase the human mouth, right? It, I've never seen, well, except with the exception of the first one that had like the venom teeth going on it. Like these are decidedly human teeth. That is really, really wild. And let's zoom in here a little bit. What really alarms me, I'm not sure what the DPI is, what the DPI is on this thing. You know what gets me too is things I'm seeing now, like the little patterns. That's that's something like, you know, it could be tomato, it could be a basil leaf, it could be anything. The black olives are kind of unique. This is actually kind of a horror show. Like this is almost very Ren and Stimpy like. It's the teeth that really get me. You know, you almost you could almost write a tragic story. Maybe not for this first guy. He's his own tragic story. But for something like this, you could say that these robots were primarily. I mean, I think that's actually. Isn't that sort of the lore behind the GoBots? That they were humanoids that had converted themselves over into mechanical beings, not cyborgs. Maybe they were. I'm not really sure. I forget my lore on that. Um, and, and I think that was more um, before they had become GoBots. When they were still underneath their, their Japanese moniker. This one's a probably, well, decidedly a little bit more difficult for me to, because it's, it's showing the same sort of action. Someone sitting or standing eating, but not more beyond that. So I kind of wonder, okay, so this is with layout to now. If I were to go back, this isn't going to remember anything. You'd have to save this. I know that if I were to switch it to the last, the initial layout, it's going to completely come up with something wildly random. What I can say is there is something interesting about how this is being put together. And of course it is. When we look at something from a randomized factor, our minds automatically go toward trying to find some sort of comfort zone. It's looking for something that doesn't alienate us some reality that we can set our feet and ground ourselves with. Now, part of this has also been because there are some, there's a movie coming out soon. In fact, I think uh, at the Chargers game or something, I'm not a football person. I don't know. There's footage of them coming. Around. In fact, I have some of the footage. I'll go ahead and overlay it here in just a second. And you can see they, I mean, I think these are just actors that they had a few of them, like four of them that were out there, but the marketing is really brilliant. They're taking that angle of the whole Blair wish project thing. This is for a movie that has to deal with AI coming into conflict with humanity the the movie trailers are coming out right now for it i can't forget it's on the back of their their shirts and anything like this it, it reminds me of the y2k stuff there's a lot of hype there's a lot of weirdness and in the end i often think that ai may have its place may have its spot somewhere in our history but at the exact same time it is a very very odd it's just a very odd thing to see manifest and happen. I'd like to think that human imagination is something that is boundless. Wow, that first one. That's actually kind of crazy rad. I love that. I know it's nuts looking, but it's just wild. I'm experiencing this for what it is right now. And if this was the only thing AI did was give you a real prompt, if it served as a prompt... To get your mind going, to clear out the bullshit that therapy tries and, you know, to do for you and things like that. But this is like that injection of either amalgamated and prepackaged, you know, artificial creativity that, that 
yaks itself out onto a screen for you to look at and go, yeah, hey, I can make something better from this, then great. But if this is something where you go, well, this is what I want, but I just want my main character in there, or this is what I want because it's less work and I can get this out and I can make money, then I'm going to be one of the first people to say, well, you're in this for the wrong thing. I don't believe that anyone gets into the arts to become rich. I think there's a lot of people that inadvertently end up getting rich or the ones that really put their time and effort into it. And then a byproduct of it is from their success and from people liking their work, they become wealthy or well-known or whatever. It's just weird. It's just wild. And even then, I can't let go of the fact that, you know, two of the three or two of the four here have teeth again. And the ones up here on this one are just absolutely batshit, beautifully crazy. Like that is... That is something else. So I will go ahead and show this. This is some of the comments that were made on this on this video. And it, even some of the comments here. The hard part seems to be getting the exact same character ship replicated in different poses and situations. No shit. It's just putting things together. A lot of it seems like it's a diversionary tactic to, to get away from paying people to do good work. You know, this comment here, the comic book generator is so interesting. It's a shame you can't lock mid journey into a character style. So you can said, so you can generate imagery with specific characters and outfits, etc. I'd love to make a comic out of my features, uh, screenplay just to sell it in then hire an artist. It's not our fault. You're broke. Oh yeah. And I didn't even touch this. So before I end this, I'm going to show you something here. So I'm going to take this exact same prompt and I'm going to go to Japanese. I'm going to go ahead and hit go. And I imagine you can understand where this is going to go. The drop down for Japanese literally is manga. Now, this one hiccuped on me a little bit the last time I tried using it because it has to generate, quote unquote, a whole new story. I think it's just loading a bunch of things together again and building from there. It is stark how different and how this has managed to knock it down to a couple of different styles. Because there's also one called UFO, which is right up my alley as far as like old 1950s kind of Whitman or gold key comics. It's right in that zone. It's still weird and it's still off put, but it does do what it's saying. And you can start to see that it's dividing the different looks and feels and stuff. But I wonder where and what, what it's using as quantifiable data to identify this as, Hey, this is somebody from the 1950s. This is a car from this. I marvel at how wild that sort of strata of, of processing power must be for this to be able to accomplish this. Now here, wow, that is some nice. Why is panel one literally like, you know, oh my God, that is just like, that's like some event horizon shit right there. That is just so fucked up. Okay. All right. So I got to get a better look at that. Oh, hell. Now, see, this is interesting because this is not... Ah, uh, okay. This is fucked up. That's not terrible. For the most part. I, I would be hard-pressed if I saw that. I think if I looked at it long enough, I would be able to understand that it was AI. But there are truly some horror comics that this would be right in line with. Now, the teeth doing its weird thing and stuff like that, sure, that's a little bit off-putting. There are some things that are odd, but like even the way the hair kind of goes into the viscera and the musculature around the face, that's interesting. The little uh, Robocop kind of cogwheel right by the jaw corner, the eye-looking thing, that that's interesting. There's a lot of that in there. It, it, it's kind of bizarre. The second panel, again, the pizza's present, some weird sort of facsimile of a tong here that window being opened up in the background is very sci-fi manga which is kind of cool but the table is wooden and has no leg but it has you know like that going for it this, the robot design isn't too bad but the hands again once again are jacked up beyond belief uh getting down here talking about mangled hands all over again i'm not quite sure what in the groot is happening here but that's that's interesting not gonna lie the heads on these pretty well done but again the same sort of thing circular on the side and everything and i and you know okay that's a trope and a lot of people do it 
I think if there's anything I'm starting to learn from the AI is that there are a lot of unoriginal bastards out there, myself included, on how we draw shit. Because it's just like, well, this is a comfort zone. Of course it's what a robot looks like. Put some pointy things on him and like some round things on the side of his head. And does he have like a face? No, it's just a slit. You know? I, and, and there's been an argument made way before. There was an argument made way before this came into being in prominence where a lot of concept art because it was digital was starting to look the same same brushes same blue and orange concepts i mean go look at hollywood posters you're seeing the same thing over and over again for some reason this is showing and this one i find a harder chance of even trying to put together a story here because how do you like i don't even like unless you say well these are four separate robots that at one point in time have been human they love they love pizza so they're hanging on to the one thing that's still keeps that human element in them ripping off a little bit of robocop in there or something uh the kitchen has two or three different looks to it it has a giant bay window that two of the characters seem to be standing in front of so their backs are toward the window and then that might support the lighting on the top first panel if she's over to the front of and the right hand side of the robot on the second panel the robot on the fourth panel could then be well he wouldn't even be in that spot he'd have to be in a similar spot too because of the table layout there's not a lot to really put together here and i imagine that you probably could go into this and say well hey i'm just going to use what comes of it and you know make something make something interesting happen and i'll pick the best one from it and go from there but now you understand why so many of these other people that are interested in this are probably waiting for the ability to hire somebody or they themselves create something weird Make a character, lock that character down, and then they have that character. There's so much going on between the lawsuit for the generate. Jesus, what is happening there? <sighs> that's actually kind of rad in its own weird way. But see, these robots are totally different too. And that's fine. It was bound to happen. The scale of the pizza on all of them is just the most absurd thing I've ever seen. I think this will be enough for today. After a while, I get tired of looking at this stuff. This one, you know... <sighs> Even here, I would say, okay, there's probably some cool things like, you know, there's this connective pad here, this one here, the shoulder things. It's a mishmash. It's not the best design. If you you want to know about good design, look up Doug Chiang. He worked on episode one for Star Wars and all the, a lot of the rest of the Star Wars movies. He's very much a believer that silhouette is everything, which is why he's such a huge influence on my own work. You should be able to recognize something from a shadow, from a shape, before you ever see all of the craziness in the middle of it. And believe it or not, with a lot of mecha, if the design is done really well, you can still do that. Specifically, the characters in Gundam Wing. But there's a lot of things that just don't make sense. You could knock it down to stylization. You could knock it down to a lot of things. But I've collected manga before where the robots are illustrated in biomechanical ways that are just stunning. You even look at the concept artists that worked on the Transformers lines and how those things went together. There is a... A knowledge of how they did that i can even say initially on the on the first one or two michael bay verse sort of movies for transformers even though i was not a fan of how the characters looked mechanically they made sense with this one over here there is literally pizza and an air dock over here and i'm not sure why and does this not right there i'm going to zoom in on that because that is alarming as hell can i scroll over i can right no, it's not letting me scroll over. Why are you not letting me scroll over? I want to scroll over there. Right there. Right here. That almost looks like Pigpen or what is it? Lucy and Linus's little brother is stuck in there. That looks like his face. You see what I'm saying about our eyes playing tricks on us? Because I saw his little tobogganing hat and him and somebody left him in there. And then I'm not sure what's going on here. This looks like two human faces together. I will admit this part here is kind of rad, but it's one of those things where I'm not really sure what's going on here. Here's where the break starts to happen in the chest design. It's not the same on either side there. I'm interested to know why the humidifier is going, uh, why, why this humidifier is going at like level 11. And all this pizza and broccoli stored in here, that's crazy. I don't know if this is a bipedal machine. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if they just got really thick thighs and they just were like, uh, leg day is life. This guy has pepperonis taped all over him. And I'm not sure why. 
That's just really, really weird and a little devious. That's a little uh, General Grievous there for me. So, and this is very uh, HR aliens gear, Geiger, Geiger, Geiger looking. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that. Leave a comment below. I guess my fun, even when you zoom in, like it's it's pixelated. It looks like you can up res this. There is an option down here to paint or to print paint, upscale it, save it. You share it to the community. I'm not doing any of that. Um, there's a bunch of other styles, as I was talking about earlier. Franco-Belgian, Haddock, Amoricon, 3D render. Okay, that one will end. We're going to end on that one. So I just want to know what that's going to be like. Because I'm willing to bet it's going to be different enough from everything else, but I wonder if it's going to pull anything else into there that you know I could maybe start to feel like, okay, there's, you know, there's a definite reason to add this to your tool set. I think the other thing, too, is the fact that, and I did do some like this. Maybe we'll do one more, and I'll show you the one thing that really bugs me about this. Now, of course, the server is ready again, so, man, this thing already went an hour. I'm telling you, like, roughly 40 minutes have already gone by, and it doesn't even seem like it. Just using one stupid prompt, different layouts, and different rendering techniques, you could waste your entire week doing this sort of thing just to come up with an idea as opposed to sitting down and writing out what you think about a character or talking to an artist or a writer about it and trying to figure out something from there. I mean, we did it before. Why can't you still do it now? And I hear people a lot of times say, well, because of money. Yeah, I get it. Now imagine what that's like for the artist that has no money. You know, that's not getting paid for their work or the writer. Put the show on the other foot. Maybe you're a great visual person, but you can't write a story. There are plenty of people. Oh, my God. Ah, that's weird. You know what really gets me too, and I'm noticing this, and this is this proved it true to me. If this robot is white, don't you give me no white robot. That's even more worrisome. I dare you. I dare you to give me a fucking white robot. Because I think what it's trying to do is it's trying to give something that works. But it's interesting that there's the tropes again, too. There's the orange and the blue coloration. And they took it so far as to put it into the eye colors. And, of course, the robots are white. Even the freaking LED. That background on panel one is literally every Twitch streamer in the world with these LED lights and crap in the background. Oh, God. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm, I got to be careful that the Twitch Anti-Defamation League will probably come after me at some point. Panel 2 is, you know, they're all weird. I, I have no other words for that aside from... It's just... oh, It's always a strange thing to see what this thing spits out. Now, do I think that there's some interesting inspiration that could be culled from this? Sure. Absolutely. Do I think that a lot more people are just going to run with a design they pop up with in here? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's definitely going to happen. It's absolutely going to freaking happen. People want things easy, and they want things to be respected. And the, and no doubt, you know, there was a woman on, on Twitter, and I only say this. Well, I say woman, I don't know. It could have been a guy running the account. I honestly have no idea. Whoever they were, they were going on and on and on about, you know, the incredible work that they were copywriting. And even though people were like, you can't copyright this stuff, there is nothing for it. They were saying they had. All these, and I'm like, I know the cost of copywriting things. It ain't that cheap. You know, not le not not the full house version of it. You know, oh my God. Okay. So let's, while we wait for this, I'll ask when I'm going to zoom in here on this nightmare fuel. That is crazy. See, I don't, there's parts of it. I don't hate because it does elicit this factor of like, you know, whenever like Disney makes, makes live action versions of their animated features, it feels like that now, because if I saw somebody that looked like what essentially looked like parboiled eyeballs with another eyeball in the inside of it, shoved behind some glass talking to me, I, I would, that's a reality I just don't want to be a part of. I have questions as to why the mouth is shaped like this. What does it look like when it's shut? Why is it enjoying the pizza this way? It's just weird. It's so freaking wild. That is just nuts. Okay, so I'm actually going to take a screenshot of this. You guys are going to get to see me work a little bit on this. Let's see here. I'm going to draw this out. So what I'm doing, I'm just taking a screenshot to save for my thumbnail. Welcome to part of my creative process. I 
go ahead and move this down here out. So you guys can't see where I'm saving it. I always get paranoid like someone's going to see where the hell I'm saving things and stuff like that. I'll be like, ha ha! Now we know how to hack into his computer. Uh, robot screen cap for thumbnail. I know that's why you guys are watching. That drama, right? <laughs> oh my god, that's how he made a thumbnail. Alright. Close out of that. Get back to this. Yeah, that's just crazy. And this thing is still trying to load. Alright, let me get out of this here. So we'll go ahead and end on this one here. Um, take a look at that one up close. Yeah, it's interesting. This was kind of aesthetically pleasing. You can almost see this as being like some sort of... <sighs> I'm going to make a story right here. So maybe this is the back end of like, do you guys remember the show from the 1970s called the Ark? It was a bunch of teenagers, and like a chimpanzee. I'm not shitting you. It's on YouTube and they would travel around and they were trying to bring technology back to different civilizations here on earth. Like it was after a nuclear war or something. It's been a long time since I've watched it. Maybe this is the updated version of it. And this is the back end of the Ark that has the scenic area where they eat pizza and all this other sort of stuff. You know, after he's hunted down some three-headed like deer and made, you know, venison sausage out of it and turned that into pepperoni. I don't know. I don't even know where the cheese comes from. Maybe they had to, maybe that was, my, you know, micro-sized and they made it larger. I don't know. I'm making shit up now. But there are some nice prompts for the imagination there. There's nothing wrong with that. But keep the human element in there. That is the thing is that this should never be the be-all, end-all. This shouldn't be the end result. And even, and I know, I, I'm smart enough to know that even the people that are using this straightforward and moving forward with this, only a few are saying, well, I basically made a whole book out of whatever this thing spit out, you know, whether, and maybe the story was written in chat GPT. I don't know. Regardless of how it comes about, it is still something to see how fast this is evolving and where we're heading. I cannot imagine where we're going to be in 10 years. There are already animated facets, three-dimensional rendering objects happening all through the power of AI. The issue is that real theft of what we have created as humans is the fodder for what is being utilized in these programs. They aren't thinking, they aren't learning, they aren't imagining, they're reprocessing and just putting it back together into a shiny package that initially, yeah, it's kind of, shocking and maybe even a little exciting to people i imagine and i know i'm going to get some hate for this but if you're the sort of person that isn't able to draw isn't able to create maybe you see something like you go to the nelson atkins museum and it's you see these amazing oil paintings or these pop culture sculptures or anything else like that and you don't have that creative asset within yourself but now a program comes along and says just type some words in me and i'm going to make some amazing stuff that you can take care of you can, you can print, you can do whatever you want with. Well, that's fine. But recently, her name is Gray Delisle. She voices Daphne in Scooby-Doo. She's a well-known voice actress, and you can go look at this on Twitter. I'm not calling that stupid thing X. I'm going to keep on calling it Twitter. Uh, she posted how she had, I guess, bought a, a canvas work from an artist of Daphne. I think she spent $500 on it. But he never bothered to tell her it was AI generated. And it was actually ripping off another artist's style. And if I have the screenshot, I'll go ahead and pop it on over this weird nightmare fuel here next to me. But so with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop this particular recording. And no doubt I'll be back to revisit this and uh, go from there. I think it's going to be really, uh, really a trip. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I am Mario the Artisan Rogue. You can find more links down below and stuff. And I will keep on making videos about this sort of thing because I do find it fascinating just as much as I find it worrying. But I do have honest, honest belief that in the end, human creativity has a lot to offer. But it is fragile and it can go extinct just like anything else if we're not careful. With that, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.